today we're here with Ryan and his T3 van. So this van is actually a South Africa special. It is a 2.6 liter, right? Yes, 2.6 liter, 5 cylinder. So it's a 5 cylinder, it's an I-5. What basically happened is, once the stamps were used up, they took them to South Africa to reintroduce the car. They changed a few things, which Ryan's going to show us. And they also introduced it with a fuel injected uh, straight five Audi sourced engine. So this is basically like, you'd, you could call it like their own version of a resto mod. It was great. It has a lot of power. I think about how much? Uh, 135 horsepower. 135 horsepower. So what the South Africans did is they also made a few changes, right? Um, what else did they change? I think they changed these vents here, right? Yeah, the vents are changed. So on one side you have an intake, on the other side uh, you have for the AC ducts and things like that. Okay. So then you have the engine here. Okay. So this is one of these cars that was brought in for uh, R&D by Tata. So this is barely used. This is like, it's very original. And this is the engine here. So it's got a transaxle. You call it a transaxle? Yes, transaxle. transaxle. We've got the, um, uh, the engine over here. And this is fuel injected. So it is a little difficult to source parts. You have had a little bit of a struggle, right? Getting parts for this? Yes. So it took me quite a bit of effort to get timing belt for it. I also oh. bought a lot of other parts for it. But anything engine related right now is a pain to find. Okay, okay. And uh, what are the parts? Did you find them as Audi parts or what was the, what was the thing? Uh, yes, Audi 100. Audi 100, okay, okay. So that was what, a 2.3 litre, 2.5? Uh, I went by parts number, it was 5. I went by part number, it's not by CC. So. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so there's a lot of space out here. And uh, I guess, what does this do? These are all for the so, AC, yeah, right? It's all AC ducts. AC ducts, okay. And the, and the nice thing about it is it has an AC throughout the whole cabin, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So look around. I think also the windows are quite large, right? Yeah, it has got uh, larger windows for the South Africa uh, country. Okay. Is this bumper uh, the same? It looks a little... Is it fiberglass or metal? This is fiber. So this is the Caravel model. So okay. So Caravel is what? Uh, range topping. It's yes. the top model. Uh, high, high spec. Okay. So the only thing higher than this would actually be what? Um, a synchro? A synchro and a... Um, what is it called? That B32, right? Yeah, the Porsche uh, B32. But that's very, very rare, right? That's it. I think only 15 or something were made. 15 or 20 were made of those. Okay, okay. 15 or 20, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that is interesting. So this is, I think, the best that you could get apart from the Synchro, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And these wheels, these wheels are a bit different, right? I think they're called uh, Sunburst, right? Sunburst wheels. Sunburst wheels. Okay. Everything's same. Okay, okay. So the windows are larger, then you have larger brakes all around. Okay. Then you have electric uh, uh, door mirrors, you have, you have a padding dash, oh. a, di a different steering wheel, mm -hmm. you have a tachometer. What is it, like a Passat one? It looks looks different, right? Uh, it's, it's, specific, not it's specific to specific this. To this right? Specific to this, right? I think this had a lot of special parts, right? Hmm. So yeah, even this. Is yeah, this... You have, you have armrest here, which okay. um, also came on certain models in in uh, in the US. Some Vanagons have it. Okay. Also, I think the Austrian models have it. So what is a Vanagon? So Vanagon is the American market. But is it like stripped for... Um... No, it's uh, they have mostly American cars, the higher spec. Okay, okay. So yeah, this is... Uh... And the front end is a bit different too, right? Yes, so you have the twin headlights. Okay. You have the larger uh, VW logo. Okay, and you got the... 125 mm. You got the same wrap around right? lower grille. So I think this is the same as the B32, right? The lower lip. It looks the same, right? With the spoiler down. Yeah, the spoiler. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let's check out the interiors. You say that the seats can fold completely, right? How does this work? So you have a seat here that they can fold. This 
just turn okay. into an extra seat. And this all folds completely flat too, right? That's another feature. That's a, that's the last seat. That, that's the last seat. Okay. Ah, interesting. It's got a very comfy interior. So let's take it for a spin in a bit and talk more about it. So we're here in Ryan's van. And uh, so basically, what year is this? This is a 1996. 1996. When did it start there? Uh, 1992 till 2002. 10 years. 10 years. Okay. And I guess when it got discontinued in Europe, they brought it to South Africa, right? Yes. Yeah. And when it got discontinued in South Africa was supposedly because of lack of spares. Okay. okay. But they were producing it, right? That doesn't yeah. make sense. But I think that happens in India too, you know. We had a lot of cars that expired in another country. They got done with the tooling and they brought it here. Like the Fiat's, right? The Palio was, the Palio, the Uno. They were over in another country and then they brought them here, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I heard that before there was a chance that Maruti would have been with VW, right? Yeah. I wish VWs had come instead of Maruti though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I turn these on, these lights? Yes, you can turn them on. Gives us some lighting, so um, so yeah, there would have been maybe T uh, T3 or T2 vans with diesel engines or something, maybe more Beetles, or I think they might have been brought golfs. Yeah, I think would have had a lot of uh, water cooled golfs here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, better for the like this type of environment, right? Yeah. Stronger cars, yeah. safer cars. So you work on the T1. So T1 would be transporter one. That's a split window, right? So. A T1 is a beetle. Okay. A T2 is a van. Uh huh. And a T3 is a notch bag. Okay. But then in vans you have a T2 T1, mm -hmm. which is a split window. Mm -hmm. Then you have the T2 T2, which is a bay window combi. Okay. And then okay. you have a T3 T2 T3, which is uh, basically this T25. So this is basically the third generation of vans, right? This is the third generation. And what about that big van? I've seen there was this other big van that is there. Is it a truck or a van? It yeah. has a flat front. Yes, yes. So VW yeah. does have something like that also, but I'm not very familiar with that model. Yeah, I don't think there are any in India, right? They might have been so. too big, yeah. I think yeah. in that size, they mostly had a Mercedes or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you've worked on all three, three of the main generations, right, of vans. Yeah. And no. you got to work on? I worked on two of them. Okay, didn't get to work on this. No, <laughs> no. I worked on this and I worked on the T2. The, the, the split window I have not had a chance to work on. Okay, okay. But I guess it's just an evolution of their car, right? They started with a small, um, what, that was an 1100 first? The air cool, uh, split window? Yeah, yeah, it was 1100. So it started with 1100, then it went up to what, 1800 in the split? Uh, yeah, it went up to say 1600. 1600. 1600 and then 2000, which was for the Westphalia fuel injected engine. Oh, okay, okay. So did this come in a Westphalia? Yes. This, this came as this a Westphalia. This did come too. in a Westphalia. Okay. So the first version of this would be an air cooled engine uh -huh. uh, with twin carburetors. Uh -huh. uh, wasn't very powerful, didn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. And then after maybe I think three years or four years, they, they introduced. Uh, the diesel, uh, 1.6 diesel tur turbocharged engine. 1.6 diesel turbocharged, okay. So I think that's very similar to what we got in the Skoda Octavia, right? Yeah, supposedly the same block. Same block, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I remember we had a friend, so he had uh, completely swapped the engine out, right? He put in the um, Octavia engine in his? Narendra? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. He did put an Octavia engine in his. Uh, again, supposedly a direct fit. Mm, yeah, it's very likely that the block will have the same uh, mounting points and all that, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is a car you really wanted, right? You were thinking about it many yeah. years ago, trying to get this exact one, right? It took me four years to finally get this one. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that ad had come up and you were like, oh, I need it, but... Yeah. I guess you just have to be patient, right? And yeah. you finally get it. I think you can, I think you, can uh, you can add the video that uh, took us to Pune to buy this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm missing the clip of you hugging the van when you see it. That's oh, yeah. missing. 
Don't worry, I can always hug it again. It's my darling. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> So yeah, if you were to make any changes to this van, what would you do? Just what? wheels, bro. Just wheels. Just wheels. Bigger just, wheels. Just wheels. Mm. Nice starburst wheels. Starburst. So this uh, wheel pattern is shared with which car? Uh, all the modern Skodas. Modern Skodas. Okay. Okay. Huh. So are these desirable vehicles compared to the Synchros or compared to a Bay? What would you think of this as desirability? Uh, I'm not very sure how desirable these are compared to the earlier two generations, but yeah, a lot of people have, do have these uh, in Europe and America. So yeah, even uh, the East, East Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really underappreciated because it functions like a like a newer van, right? It's very cold in here. It's nice. It's it's wider compared to the previous two models. So mm -hmm. therefore, you have much more space. In yeah. Here, you know, more, more comfort. Yeah, yeah. And I and it keeps up with modern traffic, right? It's not like it's slow. Yes, this one does keep up. The earlier versions of this van were slow. They were not quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but this has a nice engine. I think they would call it the fuel injected Voxy bus, right? In uh, South Africa. Yeah, so the Voxy bus was a, a trim, trimmed uh, down version of this, which okay. had uh, a smaller engine though. Mm -hmm. But still fuel injected? Uh, I guess so. I'm not very clear on that. Mm -hmm. I guess so. But it did have a smaller engine. Mm -hmm. so I think this one is perfect because it adds the, um, it's, it has the whole kit, it looks very sporty. And it's not, it doesn't have that flat six from that uh, B32, right? Yeah. So I was reading that those were basically, um, they were used to follow race cars or something. Yes. Was it Dakar yes. Rally or what was it? Oh, uh, it was for one of those, uh, maybe Dakar Rally. Uh -huh -huh. So I think they used to follow them and they were just 15, you were saying, made some, a very, yeah, low very low number. Very low number. And I think they've taken some of those design aspects and added it to this spec. This is called, some, is it, does it have a special name? Does this spec have a name? I don't think so. No. No, no. no, I think this is just the 2.6i. Um, so yes, South Africa did have a couple of engine variations. Mm -hmm. So they started from a 2 litre uh, Golf engine. Okay. okay. Then they had the 2.3, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the same uh, uh, spec as this basically. But it was, a, I think it was a 4 speed gearbox. Mm -hmm. in the 2.3 then they had a 2.5 mm -hmm. and then they had a 2.6 mm -hmm. so what's your take on uh, vw's i think you really love your vw's this is what your fourth or fifth in the in the garage yeah this is my fifth vw so you've got the two beetles you've got a a super right those yeah. are not too common in india yeah not, I, too, not too many of them. people might debate on this but that is some people say it's more desirable right it's got modern suspension better engine People, yeah, they say more desirable are the older generation, but mm -hmm. I, I prefer the Super. Mm. Yeah, it's got that nice look, right? The chunky look, the elephant's yeah. foot, all that stuff. Yeah. So that I think that makes it really interesting, and it's the evolution of the design. It got faster, it got better. It was also made for the more for the American market, right? I think. Uh, uh, no, not no? really, not really. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, the curved window, mm -hmm. like the thirteen or three, so a Super with the curved window. Uh, it was uh, supposedly again made for the American market because they came out with some rules that uh, the windshield had to be a certain distance from the driver. Okay. So then that's where the 1303 model in the Super came out. Okay. The earlier two years, the Super had the flat windshield. Okay, okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. And yours is an American spec? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Is it easy to decode VIN numbers? Because what I notice is I'm more into the Mercedes and BMW. I can put that VIN number and I can find out everything about the car. Can you do that on a website? Can you find all the information yeah. you need? Yes, yes. You, you, can, you yeah, don't yeah. need to do that birth certificate thing, right? Not yeah. really. Not, not really. You can put a chassis number and you can decode this. You can basically any BMW. Okay, okay. Huh. Not very difficult. You've also got the, um, the Golf, right? That's how we met. 
<laughs> yeah, so you've got the golf too. And uh, yeah, those are also really interesting and very uncommon to get a two door in India. I think two doors weren't so practical. People weren't looking at sporty in India, right? Bigger household, yeah. so you need four doors, yes, right? The two door concept never caught on in India. Yeah, yeah. In India is mostly more about families and stuff, so everyone. And this is great for a family, family, right? It's great for two families. <laughs> two uh, modern families. How many people have you fit in here? Uh, eight. Eight? Okay. Yeah, you can't really overload it. But you really used your bay window a lot, right? I remember we used to go and take it to drop off the engine and stuff when you yeah, do yeah, engine I use work. Yeah, bay window a lot. Yeah. So that's getting restored now, right? Yes. Okay. It'll come out soon. How many years did you have it? Uh, eight years? You've had it for eight years. Yeah, eight years in November. Eight years in November. So that means you. I think you had it for six years on the road. Two years you had to do a little work, and right. Five five years on the road. Three years in restoration. It wasn't what so you expected, slow. right? You thought you looked at the van when it was still on the road, and you thought there wasn't so much body work, right? Yeah, there's something called Lambi. <laughs> uh, it hides things. Yeah, lot of things hidden, right? Yeah, but I think that's a that's a struggle with classic cars, right? If you get one which hasn't been touched, you know it's metal, it's all metal, or at least mostly metal, you're better off, right? Yeah. But what what would you do if today you had to build a van? Would you like to get it in a rougher condition and build it up, or would you like it as a runner? What's your take on this? Do you prefer the runner and something like this? It's sorted. There's no work. I, for... I wouldn't mind a restoration project provided it was it had all its parts on it. Mm -hmm. Like most of my cars that uh, I bought mm -hmm. were all project cars, but mm -hmm. they were cars that were just uh, like like you know they were they were just kept in a garage standing for a long time and they remained there. But mm -hmm. they had everything on them, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to hunt for a lot of parts. In, uh, for example, like body stuff and things like that. Yeah. They were all there. So I had to just get mechanical stuff, which was fine. Mm -hmm. I think mechanical stuff is easier to get in India, right? You get these running parts in India, right? Yes. You get something. Now it's really difficult. Now it's difficult. I think um, what's happened is whatever supply that was there has all been yeah. used up, right? Yes, people have started restoration. Uh, I mean, restoring their vehicles. Mm. The parts supply in India has run dry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now there are new problems, you know, that makes this hobby really difficult. This paperwork issue. I know last year yeah, both of us. The government is not really not supporting anything in regards to automobiles class. in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I really appreciate when you see um, you see a politician actually talking about his passion for vehicles. I won't name what we saw, yeah. but you know that was really like an eye opener. Okay, somebody appreciates hobbies because hobbies are also an important thing for people right not everyone has them it is a luxury but it is also that something where everyone can enjoy it you could have an rx100 you could have a, a hayabusa you can have anything right in that whole range and you can still enjoy doing something right getting your hands dirty and it's a nice hobby there is something at the end of it you can always yeah it's not everyone needs something at the end of the day to relax their mind so yeah for me, it's fiddling with this with these things. So like you know, yeah. they they give me peace of mind, and maybe uh, when they're done, take them out for a drive and and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It calms me down. Mm -hmm. Some everyone has their own thing. Yeah. So I hope there was. I hope there is more appreciation in the future because today, um, let's say this car is worth quite a bit. So it's not. It's worth spending the money. For me, I look at it as okay. If a car is worth a lakh. Or maybe two or three, and you have to spend forty thousand rupees to fifty thousand rupees on paperwork. Does it make sense? You're doing it more because of the emotion. Yeah, it's, and it's a passion for this thing. Like we basically are keeping history alive. I wish the government saw it in that way and like had some compassion towards us. But it's not only that. The other thing is, let's say tomorrow you need to get get rid of something, right? You have to have that freedom. I yeah. think that's also important. You shouldn't be able. You shouldn't have to lose much money. You will always lose money when you sell something. You might be better off. That's the advantage that people have in the U.S., right? They're able to buy rougher cars and cheaper prices, build them, and still make money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here we don't have that luxury, but I think it should always be in the positive. Then you're lucky, right? 
the right. difference being in europe or america and then india is here we get nothing mm-hmm. there they have all the resources they have the parts so everything is at their hand over there here yeah. we have to really struggle to get these things going because buying the parts is all is one thing and then getting them to india and paying the custom duty which which is so high again it's a very tedious process yeah and i think sometimes we like we try to cut cut costs by asking a friend hey can you carry this for me sometimes it's okay but sometimes you have a massive part and how do you bring that right yeah that luckily sometimes helps out you know you get it's about what 60% on parts that you import Sixty percent on transport and shipping, yes. right? Yes, it's quite expensive, and uh, unlucky for us, they're uh, charging um, taxes on transport. I don't understand that at all. That is quite bad. So, from what I understand, is they they charge you on every uh, penny that you put abroad. Mm-hmm. So, on parts and transport, mm-hmm. so and insurance. So, if it's glass, it goes really high. Yeah. So the larger the consignment, the more you pay. So I've never had to import a piece of glass. You've had that experience, right? Yes, I did. So that is quite a quite a tough one to do, right? You have to ask somebody else. You can't do it yourself, right? No, you can't. I I I asked a garage in Bombay to help me out with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you enjoy about this van? What's the best part? Do you like the power? Do you like the color? Do you like this, the way it looks? Just everything? It's a complete package. So I was thinking about this a few days ago. Mm-hmm. And I have a soft spot for for boxy designs. Huh. So my Volvo, mm-hmm. my Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. This van. Yeah. The T2 van that I have. Yeah. Very boxy looking things. So. So I I have a soft spot for beautiful boxy designs. Yeah, I think not everyone could appreciate these, right? When I got into this hobby, people really didn't like the cars I was into. It was like the 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 cheapest one you could buy. People didn't like one two threes back then much. They were like, oh, this is the cheap entry car. Yeah. The Impalas were still very interesting that way, but things like that weren't so desirable. You used to get Golfs for fifty thousand bucks and on. Yeah, that was a different time though but yeah yeah now it's getting tougher to hunt cars as well right even a golf is so difficult to come by even now nowadays yeah i know i know really tough to get a nice golf but most people want a two door it's really tough to get one you have to just take what you get i feel but i think uh, if companies did launch two door cars in india now mm-hmm. they would sell because the generation has changed Like look at the thought. A lot of younger people do have money in their hands now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While they are being single, etc. So, yeah, you know, I think two door cars would sell now. Yeah, it is a sporty thing, and uh, I think the Golf GTI, uh, the Polo GTI did really well, right? It didn't do really well, but yeah, it did really well. It had its own thing. I think going the on. Beetle, um, the the new Beetle sold much better than the two door really? GTI. Okay, okay. So I feel like this is the answer to the GTI for the Golf. This 2.6, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Mm. I'll show you guys another one of Ryan's cars next time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching and share it with your friends if they like vans. See you guys next time. Until next time.